So another question that we often get um, uh, here at the YWCA is it can be hard to decide how to start this conversation with a family or friend. Um, so we get that question a lot, and so Nicole, do you want to kind of talk a little bit about the best way to go about that conversation? Absolutely. So I will start with saying it looks different for everybody. Mm -hmm. it, there's, it, depending on your relationship, whether it's a coworker, a family, a friend, um, um, if it's just an acquaintance that you may know, everything's going to look a little bit differently, mm -hmm. but kind of a good basis to start off with is just a very basic conversation of just how are you doing, how are mm -hmm. things going, anything new happening. Mm -hmm. Just those very, very basic things that you would do every day with anybody else. Um, and it just kind of makes it feel like almost as if it's non-threatening, mm -hmm. right? We don't want to start off with just, hey, I've been noticing these things. We don't want to go right there. We want to kind of build up to it, right? And, mm -hmm. um, and so I definitely would say just start it off with just a very basic conversation. And then next I would say definitely for a piece of advice, you don't have to because this is not always going to work out this way. Mm -hmm. Try not to do it over the phone if you can help it. Try to do these things in person. We understand that not all of this is going to happen, you know, especially if there's there's state lines between you two or what have you. But um, try to do it in person if you can, just because we also don't know if that per that person that is in the in the perpetrating you, if they're actually in the room, if they might get access to this phone, um, if there's other complications around your environment that you're in. So definitely, if you can, try to do it in person. But if not. Um, you know, do it wherever you're able to and wherever they feel comfortable with. You definitely want to make sure that they are feeling comfortable before you start any of this major conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's really about um, building the conversation so that it's comfortable. And so yeah. that's where it really can just be as simple as Nicole mentioned, how is it going? You're opening the door for somebody to talk about their relationship if they want to. Now, if you're seeing things that are more concerning, there are ways that you can ask a little bit more in depth if it feels safe. I think some examples of that would be asking questions such as um, asking them about the relationship. Is this relationship energizing you or does it feel like it's draining you? Um, what happens if you disagree with your partner? Questions like uh, what happens if there's a disagreement? What do apologies look like in the relationship? That can just help you feel out what the relationship really is like and make that person feel safe to answer those questions. Um, I also really recommend people, they can go to our website or our partners at the Washington Coalition Against Domestic Violence. They have created a wonderful family and friend guide that goes into a couple other examples. Some other examples they list are questions like, um, what are you most worried about in your relationship? What concerns you the most? So once you've created that safe atmosphere for this person to talk to you, I think those are some examples of ways to dig a little deeper. But really at the beginning, it's just about opening up a conversation about how do you feel in your relationship? And that from there, um, the victim or the survivor of their situation can kind of indicate to you whether they feel safe having that conversation.